Just you know why. that I do tutorial on how I do all my night time lapses and night photos and stuff like that. So yeah, hope you guys enjoy. So I'm gonna be going over a ton of different things, which is why I'm gonna include a list right here with all the timestamps if you wanna skip to a certain point, if there's a specific thing that you wanna watch and learn about. So I'm gonna be starting off with like the most basic things. Now obviously you're gonna need a tripod as well as a camera that can shoot manual. Now I use the Panasonic GH4 which is actually like one of the worst cameras to be doing night photography with just because of its micro four thirds sensor. Now what that means is that its sensor is much smaller than a standard camera or a standard DSLR. Not necessarily smaller than a standard camera, but like a camera that has a full frame sensor that is much, much bigger. So which means it lets in a lot less, a lot less light is hitting the sensor. So things like night photography, it's not quite as strong yet, but it still is a great camera. Although this camera is not the greatest at shooting night photography, it doesn't stop me from going out there and shooting uh, the stars and stuff like that. So no matter what camera you have, you should not stop you from trying to do some night photography. So I'm going to start off with the most basic things that I always do because of the fact that it is not the greatest at well, light. I'm always shooting with the iris wide open. So that means I have my f-stop stop, uh, pushed all the way down to f2.8 to be letting in all the light. Now when it comes to ISO, I generally like to shoot between 800 and 1600. Now another thing that I always do, this is personal preference, but I always shoot in RAW. And what that means is that the camera is not compressing the image down to any file format, so I'm not losing any data. So it's not press compressing it down to like JPEG or PNG, which will make this fire file smaller. Another nice thing about shooting in RAW is that in post, it gives me way more options to edit with. Now when it comes to setting the shutter, I normally shoot between 30 and 40 seconds, but sometimes if it's really dark, I'll push all the way up to 50 seconds, but normally 30, 40 seconds does a trick. And a beginner mistake that I always tend to do that's super simple is setting the focus. Making sure that I have the focus set so that way everything is in focus and it doesn't get blurry. And you can do this by setting to manual and then going to almost infinity but not quite. There's generally a sweet spot and I recommend spending some time finding that sweet spot. That way when it's really dark out, you can find it really quickly and get the focus set as one of the first things. So something that I didn't think I would be doing very often, but then I found myself doing quite a lot is sh taking a picture of something that happens to be really, really bright, which makes it really hard to also capture the stars at night. So like this picture of the lava flowing in, I could not take a picture and like actually see the smoke and like the flow of the lava without it being completely blown out if I was trying to take a picture of the stars. So what I found myself doing was taking two pictures. One that was with the shutter being open to three to four seconds, so that way you could actually see like the smoke and whatnot. And then one that was like 40 seconds so that way you could see the stars. And what I did is then in post is I put both pictures into Photoshop and I cut out the really bright spot in the overexposed picture. That way you could see the smoke and what I wanted to see. And I also did this for one of my favorite pictures of my friend Quinn who was uh, spinning steel wool. Now with this I was like a one second shutter that we could actually see the steel wool but that meant everything else in the foreground was really dark. And I also then took a long picture that was like 20 to 30 seconds that way you could see a little bit of the roar in the background. You could see the foreground is lit up a little bit more and basically all I did was blend those two pictures together so I brought out all the brightness and everything and ended up with this really great picture that I thought was actually one of my favorite pictures that I've ever taken. Now when it comes to editing a single picture, I use Lightroom. And the first things I always do when I have a night time, night picture is that I'll bring the, the exposure up quite a bit. That way it's almost like 
too bright, but then I'll take the contrast and bring the contrast way up. And what that does is then it brings out the stars and it makes everything that's kind of dark and brings it darker and makes everything that's bright brighter. And if you have taken a picture of the Milky Way, it really starts to bring out the Milky Way. I really like to make sure that the sky is really popping and make sure everything else is kind of level and not too oversaturated or anything like that. So what I'll start to do is I'll start to mess with the colors to really bring out the colors of the sky, especially when it comes to the Milky Way. I'll be messing with the colors, bringing the saturation up and adjusting things to make things kind of make the sky pop as much as possible. But by doing that, you're probably also going to make the things you don't necessarily want to pop. So in like this picture right here, what I found is that we had a candle on the pontoon and it was making the, when I started editing it, the pontoon was getting way too bright and it was like way too oversaturated and I didn't really like that. So I decided to mask over it and just bring the saturation down a little bit and bring the exposure down just a little touch so it wasn't drawing your eye to that. Now a lot of this stuff in editing is nitpicky stuff. When it comes to editing, everything is just personal preference and just mess around until you get something that you personally like and enjoy. Now when it comes to time lapses, I use the same rules that as if I was taking a picture, except I'm going to be taking lots of pictures over the course of several hours. Now something that I'm really nice about the GH4 is the fact that it has a built-in time lapse mode, which means I don't have to have some plug into it, be able to keep it, make it keep taking pictures, which is absolutely fantastic. A rule of thumb that I always use is I like to have my time lapses around 10 seconds. And what I mean by that is when I put it into post, if I'm playing it back at 30 frames per second, I want that whole clip to be around 10 seconds. So if I'm taking a picture every 30 seconds, that means I'm taking two in a minute, 20 in 10 minutes, and 30 in 15 minutes. So that means I have one second of video from my time lapse. So I'd want to leave it out there for around two plus hours if I want a nice long time lapse. Now when it comes to editing time lapses, all I use is Final Cut. The first thing I'll always do is I'll take the highlights and I'll bring those up so I can really make the stars or the Milky Way pop. And then maybe if I'll make it a little bit too grainy, I'll bring maybe the midtones or the shadows down just a smidge to make everything else uh, not so flat. Uh, bring the darkness down just so that way you keep the stars and the Milky Way really popping, but then bring everything else down a little bit. And that's basically it when it comes to editing uh, time lapses in Final Cut. Now a really nice thing about doing time lapses is that if you also want to make a star trail picture out of your time lapse, you can and it's very very simple. All you need is Photoshop and you just need to take all your photos or maybe a section of your photos from your time lapse and throw it into Photoshop. And Photoshop has this really nice built in mode or this really nice built in blending mode where you can select all different types of ways you want to blend. And one of those modes is called light and literally does exactly what it sounds like it's going to do. So if you have several pictures and you select blend, blend light mode is it'll then take all the stars and blend them together to create really great star trails. Now another nice thing is that if you want to do this but with a video, Final Cut has a built-in mode called Trails and it lets you do literally the exact same thing where you can select rather light or dark and you can select the light and then you can then start to see the star trails moving across the sky. So yeah, that is basically everything I know about shooting and editing. Uh, night photography. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I hope to show you guys more of the stuff I learn in the future. But uh, yeah, if you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Peace!